Onion Hub. Hi, welcome to another episode of our series focus on exploring JGebra. In this presentation, we're going to explore and uh, demonstrate or give examples on where we can use a specific view of GeoGebra, which is uh, called uh, the 3D graphics. Remember, in the previous videos, we have uh, presented examples of creating objects that are two-dimensional, but this time we're going to create our 3D objects, for example, our cube, our prisms, a pyramid, and other types of uh, 3D objects. So that is what we're going uh, to show in this presentation. So let's let's go to our uh, software so when we open our jgebra by default uh, this is what appears this is our 2d graphic this is our input bar but what we want to use today is our 3d graphic so let us close our 2d graphic first just go to the settings or these uh, three dots here and close and then we want to open now our 3d graphics so where can we do that it's here it's the upper uh, left part of our uh, window we have these uh, three dots or three squares just click on it and then look for what we want it's the 3d graphics so this is what we mean by a 3d graphic uh, it's actually a an intersection of three lines this is where we can create our 3d objects so again uh, let's explore our toolboxes in our toolbar because it is a bit different with the toolbars of our algebra view and our 2d graphics so still we have the move tool this is what we use to move our objects and then at uh, the last part of our toolboxes this is where we can rotate our 3d graphics if i choose this one i can actually uh, rotate our 3d graphics so whatever uh, perspective we want to look at our objects later we can do that here we can zoom in zoom out but you can uh, just scroll to do that scroll if you want to zoom in zoom out as i mentioned a while back there are three axes now because we are talking about 3d objects the x y and uh, z axis fyi uh, the red axis here is actually our x axis the green axis is our y axis and the new axis it's the z axis it makes uh, the the object 3d if you get confused of the different axes we can actually name them we go to the settings here settings and then name each of our axis so we can uh, name this one as x axis y axis and our z axis if you are working with a trigonometric function we can as well make the unit of our axis uh, in terms of radian so we can make use of pi but we are not yet doing that so let us maintain our axis like this one okay let's now move on to the objects that we can create in our 3d graphics let's start with a point so what is a point in our x y z plane if we are working with our two graphics of course a point is defined as a a pair of two numbers because a point has two coordinates in a two-dimensional plane but we are in a 3d plane a point must be defined using three coordinates so still we name a point with a capital letter but the coordinates now will be three x y z x y z here are real numbers so x y here is just the same with our uh, x y uh, coordinate in a 2d graphic except that we add a third number if we make z equal to zero the point p will uh, lie exactly in our x y plane so let us uh, create points in our 3d graphics 
we can use our toolbox here the toolbox for making a point and then select any position in our plane so maybe i want it here so it shows here the coordinates of our 3d point it says here that the x coordinate of our point a is 5.86 the y coordinate is 5.17 and then our z coordinate is exactly zero this means that the point this point is lying exactly in our xy plane we can actually see that if we move a little we see that it is exactly in our xy plane our xy plane is the shaded plane since we can see now that the command for making a 3d point is this format we can create another point using our uh, input bar so we can think of any any point i'd like the coordinates of point b to be negative two a positive three and the z uh, the z coordinate is a uh, positive five words that there our point is here it's not anymore located in our xy plane because z is not equal to zero is aligned with z equal to five these are how we create points in our xyz plane what else can we do in our 3d graphic let's move on with lines so anyway i will not be demonstrating each of the tools in each toolbox here i will just be giving you the most important one or the most common one let's create a line how do we create a line in our 3d graphics it's actually just the same with our 2d graphic we simply uh, identify the two points so line from a to b so it creates a line a line in our 3d graphics next are polygons we can still create a polygon in our 3d graphics of course uh we can identify any plane in our 3d graphics and then from that plane we can create our polygon uh, this is the toolbar for creating a polygon we can create a freehand polygon or we can create a regular polygon let's create a polygon of different side measures we can create it in any any place anywhere in our 3d graphics so perhaps i'd like to create it here in the first quadrant of our xy plane so it's just a triangle it shows us here uh the what are, what are these the coordinates of uh three points a b c they are all zero this means that all the three points a b and c are lying exactly in our xy plane that's how we can create polygons in our partition plane well if we want to create a plane or a polygon not in the xy plane but in other planes uh, we can do that by changing the coordinates of the points so for example if i change the coordinate of point a specifically changing the z coordinate say this is five of course the polygon will be uh, laid in a different plane it's a plane containing this polygon let's change this one into other numbers except zero say negative two so this is the new polygon now lying in a different plane the focus of this presentation is actually not on 2d objects because we can do this one in our 2d graphics uh, we will be focusing more on how to create our 3d our different 3d objects so let me uh erase uh these things first all right the 3d objects are actually located here in this toolbar this one we can create a pyramid a prism other things that we can do a cone a cylinder tetrahedron a cube and actually we can um do a surface of revolution but i'm thinking i will present this one in a separate video we'll just be talking about the basic 3d objects here we have the spheres maybe we could start with our pyramid if we click on this tool our help tool says that we have to select a polygon for our base and then select a top point so we can actually do this manually or we can create a polygon as a base in the polygon tool before we create our uh, pyramid 
let's create first a base say we are creating a regular pyramid so let's create a regular polygon as a base mm -hmm. okay we can start here and then identify the number of sides i want a say decagon so seven this will serve as the base of our uh, pyramid that we can create here so we can start now our pyramid creating our pyramid select the polygon and then any point as the vertex of the pyramid so this is truncated pyramid the the vertex is uh, lying in our uh, z axis so this is a pyramid our 3d object what if i want to uh, create a say a prism out of the same uh, base so what is a prism it's just a solid whose bases are exactly the same in terms of measure and of course shape so let's create a prism according to our help menu or help tool we need a polygon just the same as a pyramid we need a polygon and then select a top point so let's do that prism we are using the same base so let's click here in our algebra view or our input bar the polygon that we want to use as the base and then select a top point i like it to be a number in our z axis so there so that is the prism that i have created let us hide first the pyramid so we can see clearly our prism so our prism is a solid whose base uh, is a regular a uh, decagon we can uh, change our perspective any part of it we can uh, do that in our uh, jgebra so of course we can identify the coordinates of the points here so that is a prism if you want to make or to create a prism of different base we can start here with our polygon and then do as what we did a while back mm -hmm. let us continue by creating a what let's create a cone so to create a cone we simply have to identify a bottom point and then a top point so let's do that suppose i want this point here what is this point it's point a this is where i want to start to create a cone let's identify a radius say five but what is the orientation of the cone that we just created okay that's the orientation of the cone that we just created it's too uh, messy now let us create another one a better one a cone that is lying uh, on the same plane as with our prism let me delete this first this cone let me first write two points from which we can build our cone let us define our point with the following coordinates i want to be exactly at the origin that means zero 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 i think we need to put a space here enter that's our point p and then our second point has a coordinate 0 0 3 let us create a cone using this uh, tool or we can actually cre uh, create the object using the command cone identify the two points and the radius let's start with cone and then the two points that we need that's point p and q and then the radius of the base of the cone it could be any number let's say it's six units so that's the cone that we desire that's how we build our uh, cone what's point e or r let's delete it one the base of this cone is lying in the xy plane as our prism a while back is where's that there what else can we create we can create also a cylinder so 
it's the command is actually the same as with a cone just change the cone to a cylinder we need two points in the radius let's create the cylinder a cylinder with the same base as with this cone that we created earlier so we start with cylinder the two points a p and q and then the radius let's create a smaller cylinder let's have a cylinder with two units radius that is uh, an example of a cylinder if we want to translate our uh, objects of course we can do that by changing the coordinates of the the points from which uh, the objects are dependent at for example i want this one to be at one one yes so that the object will change but i don't want that let me go back let's create let's proceed by creating the other objects a tetrahedron what do we need to create a tetrahedron we simply need to create two points uh, we do not have to go to this uh, toolbar to create a point before we can create a tetrahedron we can do that uh, directly so just click this one tetrahedron and anywhere in our graphics view let's identify two points it create a tetrahedron for us so this is a tetrahedron same through with our a uh, cube let's say i want to create a cube here yeah there there we have it our cube we can change the location of our cube here anywhere we like we can change the dimensions by uh, dragging point w there okay so those are the different objects that we can create using our uh, 3d graphics of GeoGebra. let's create a sphere just to show you so to create a sphere we need a center point and then what and then a point uh anywhere on the sphere so click on this one so we need two points at least two points so there we have it as an example of a, a sphere so if we try a different perspective every solid here the base is in our xy plane except of course for the sphere let us check our first what was our first solid it's the prism we have the prism there so those are our different 3d objects one interesting uh one interesting value that we see in each solid here for example our prism is a number below it this 103.47 it's actually corresponding to the volume of the solid jgebra has computed it for us this is 103.47 cubic units what is the volume of the cone where is our cone we cannot see clearly the cone because it's overlapped with other objects but the volume is 113.1 so that's it's similar with the other solids here the cylinder has a volume of 37.7 cubic units the sphere we have the volume for a sphere i don't think so if we cannot see that one we can actually compute it here it says type equals volume in the name of the solid it's s enter and it will compute 116.21 cubic units that's the volume of sphere s those are the different 3d objects that we can create thank you for listening i will see you in the next video for a continuation of this topic.